Morning, 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 everyone. It's Children's Day here in Nigeria, so I think I'm just quite excited to see if I'll get a treat from my dad. Um, I don't know if I should put a reminder on Slack because we're not so many. Morning, guys. Morning, everyone. Good morning, Maria. Are you there? Yes, I am. I think I'm just waiting for a minute or two to wait for others to join. Is that okay? Yeah, I guess you can start as the others can join. Yeah. Okay, all right. So welcome, welcome, morning, everyone. This is the last um, stand up for week three. So, to year. Oh, before we go on with that, any announcement from the team? Before we get started with stand up. Uh, from, from my side, just, you know, maybe after 15 minutes or 30 minutes, uh, you are in the call. I would just like to try to understand and we'll take over. So, let's say just at 20, 10, 20, I will take over so that. I can ask some questions and understand where people are. All right, that's fine. Thank you. None from my end. Um, how about Mary? Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Um, I think the only reminder is that today is sports day, so I I I look forward to seeing people joining um cbs later not like last week all right thanks for sharing so i guess we can get to it so how are you guys uh how has this week been we'd love to hear from you what have you particularly gained from week three how would you rate week three is there anything you've improved from generally and let's just hear your struggles or so, Bini, um, you can pick this one. Okay, can you hear me, Miria? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. And good morning, everyone. Morning. Uh, to give you an update on my progress. Uh, I have uh, almost completed uh, task three, and I intend to move on. Uh, I also intend to complete uh, the career exercise for today. Uh, regarding blockers, I haven't uh, come across any blockers that uh, persisted. Uh, it took me a while to figure out some things, but uh, in the end, I've managed to uh, figure them all out. And uh, thanks for the community. Uh, they've been help helping me out quite well as well, especially Miki uh, and uh, Salam, uh, they, they have been very helpful. So I would like to thank them uh, publicly here. So thank you for the opportunity. All right, you're welcome. I'm glad you're able to, I'm glad you have no blockers so far. And it's nice that you're getting help from your teammates. So I think Martin can go ahead. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so uh, I've been working on the tasks I've been able to complete. So today what I want to be doing is I'll be working on the non-technical bit. Uh, yeah, that's uh, my updates. No blockers. Uh, thank you. Or is there anything you are most proud of from week three? Or is there anything you just gained generally? Or is there anything you've improved on from week one to week three? All right. Yeah, 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 there is um, 
there's, there's a lot of uh, like, like when uh, with, the, with the modularizing of the code uh, it has been able to assist me to be able to uh, get a lot more done with uh, less uh, writing of code All right. Thanks for sharing. So I understand that this week you've been introduced to deep learning, machine learning. We also had a guest talk yesterday. You also had um, a non-technical exercise on how to develop good questions. Also, um, a continual um, tutorial on time series data exploration. So would love to hear from you how the tutorial has been and also how you've been able to solve your um, exercises or challenges. Daisy, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mariam. It's nice to have you on our stand up today. Um, so, um, my week so far, so good. Uh, only yesterday I was having a bad mental block. I couldn't get much done, but I was able to reach out to a couple of people from Slack, um, mostly just for guidance and to help unblock, and that really helped a great deal, and I was able to cover a lot more yesterday. I'm still working on my... LGBT, the, the deep planning task, uh, while still trying to understand the concepts around it. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to cover that today. Um, but so far, so good. I think my biggest challenge was um, working with uh, working with functions, and uh, from what I learned yesterday, it's work in progress. So I've been able to implement those that I've been able to. Um, but I'm giving myself room to just keep doing better. So, yeah. All right, that's great to hear. And sorry about your mental block again. So is there, you said you've made like progress with the challenge you've had. So I just wanted to know, is there anything you're really proud of from week three? Just in general? Um, yeah, I think I'd say it's just the attitude to want to learn to keep learning and to not give up because I think one of the reasons I was having a mental block yesterday is just because I was like, no, you know what, I'm actually done because like I can't see it. But in, in retrospect, like when I look back, I think I've been able to achieve quite a lot. Not where I'd want to be, but like I've been able to, like, like I've moved, like I've grown, you know. So um, I think at times it helps to just know that even if it's two baby steps, they, they, they're worth it and they're important and it's better than zero steps entirely. So I think I would say I'm proud of the fact that I'm willing to just keep learning um, and that I'm able to write better code. Okay, <laughs> I'm able to write modularized code. It's not there yet, but I'm getting the hang of it. That's great because I believe it's super important to be self-aware. So if you actually like know your struggles and then you can identify them and then you can actually like note this progress, it's super important. So I'm glad I would just say self-awareness has been like your proudest um achievement from this week, which is which is awesome. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Um no hands up. I don't want to sound like Everest because I don't think it's great to also call out names. But I would appreciate if at least we could just come and share one or two things. We don't have to say so much, just how the week has been, our struggles, and then what we're doing to get out of the struggle. Okay, it then I sent a message.
Okay, that's great. Thanks for sharing. Margaret, please go ahead. Um, hi, everyone. Hi. Um, so I only have um, one concern that I need to um, get some feedback from you guys. So I personally have not been confident enough to post my reports on LinkedIn or Medium or the other platforms. Um, how do you guys handle or oh, the confidence to post a report when you feel like it's not good enough? Um, yeah, that's my question. Okay. Yamibel, please, do you want to open that? Yeah, no, I think that's a good question. And I've seen also probably the grades were returned last night. And I have typed also like in that kind of conversation. Definitely it's, you know, Posting is, you know, uh, you can post anything, right? It's not, it's not a big deal. And what you wrote, what I've seen is very good and clearly structured. You know, it's, it's not, it's really good, like to post it. But at the same time, it's also, you are setting a certain standard. So I, I, I my advice is that don't set too high standard. It's usually like the very first thing is just to post one or two so that you get used to it, you know? But then keep improving. I think what one of the things that just simply posting without improving over time just actually shows that you you can't improve. I mean, the whole point you are posting sometimes in this kind of um, things is to help. You know, basically you can think of it's your footprint. Where were you? Like somebody when they you know, let's imagine that your next uh, employer when they want to see where you were, they will be able to track like, okay, you know, you have been putting effort. Definitely you were starting at some point and then you're kind of going up over the ladder, right? As long as you do it very frequent, as long as you're doing it, you know, uh, consistently good over time, people would be happy about you even if you start, even if your first drafts were, even if your first posts were, you know, not good. Of course, also, if you really are not, happy over your first posts like let's say after one year you can also just disable them right just make them private so there's there are these things so i would say i think particularly your case margaret definitely post them but now just get used to it get uh, get used to just posting something and feeling it and reading and criticizing yourself even uh, for doing that right so it is the most essential element uh, that we do just to do something that you haven't done before is the most important element if you have been posting in in you know in medium and staff and you are you have a certain standard definitely don't compromise it for that like in a way that you know it's not like trying so that means try to improve so for example in your case i would say the introduction were good but there was no substance like in the analysis part sometimes right so in that case you might say okay i'm going to wait i'm going to really um, because I, I probably have to understand some basic elements and I'm just gonna kind of add them and really spend, let's say, in your strategy, in your next week, or like, say, for example, from week two to week three, you would allocate one or two hours, even if you don't have time, we know, but to actually target that. It becomes part of your strategy. But if it is failing you, because I, we, I mean, uh, my prediction is that 95 to 99%, you are not gonna do it if you don't do it, if you didn't do it last week, right? So if that is the kind of person you are and kind of like, oh, you know, in the pressure, I would say post it and then improve it. So I think my, my strategy is always definitely brand is something. If you had already a brand, you know, it's good to not play with the brand. Maybe just you can open a new account for this one. But if you didn't have a brand, the most important part is not about the quality of them, the first one. It's about posting it, getting used to the process of posting something every week. Because you will improve for sure. If you just posted, you know, week one, 
week two you will definitely post better week three you will definitely because like you got used to that confidence you no more have that resistance does that does that address your question um yes thank you yeah. um can is it possible to like uh get feedback first from um the tutors before we push it out there i, I, would, I would say the opposite that that is um that's not a good way to look at it post it that's why we always ask us post it give it to us we give you you edit okay like that way you know it's always just anticipating your weak points your weak points that you will not have time you will basically it gets harder and harder if you haven't posted it yesterday today it gets harder not easier so it's like in the flow when everyone is posting when everyone you're doing something to do it in the flow and do the part is much more easier and you know and over time you would be you would basically get used to the rhythm right like you would edit if, if you need it but the reason why many people don't edit it is because they don't have time once you post it you leave it if you didn't post it however so you write a good blog and you sent us and if you didn't post, post it you're unlikely also to post it later so that's why we really try to value just posts on themselves um because that's that's a type of mentality it's you know think of it not from knowledge skill perspective from the mentality perspective you know how do you do how do you handle such things uh, it's essential sometimes to recognize how things work you know as a human right it's like if we don't do it at some point we sometimes don't do it ever or, you know forever just uh, like so it's always good to do it on time while you are in it and while you have a fresh memory yeah yeah, thank you. Great. Okay. And I think I, I want to just add on that, Daisy, as well. So something that is really, you know, if Ten Academy is really helping you, it's not more, I mean, no, definitely we, we put effort in different things, but the, the most effort we put is for you to learn from your success. And in my opinion, it, it can be my personal or, you know, other people can share it. There is no better indicator than your successful self so that means only when you see yourself successful you learn from it and sometimes that's really the hardest thing to understand you're basically trying to create success to, to learn from it and if you haven't done something like you know what you have done in the past weeks for example you haven't run executed like you know different machineries pipelines and you know front end work with people post blogs do something that you would imagine not you but somebody else is doing it as if like you know you know if you read your post without a name you would really understand like wow like you would be the it would be the the blog you, you would be reading to learn about a certain topic and then that is and then when you figure out that was you who wrote it that's how you that would be just the best indicator so for us or for me i believe in it is bringing you first success second learning is the order sometimes it's the opposite in schools right you you learn to be successful here you become successful to learn so i think you know take that in mind that sometimes however overwhelming it is it's about after you you get there you're trying to figure out okay how did i get here you know and that's the best way of learning because now, you know, you have that confidence. You, you are, it's not a, anymore whether you can do it or not because you have seen yourself doing it. So it's just a completely different question. How did I get there? Like that means there's something that I, I have figured out all and I have done it. And uh, now I didn't understand it. So now let me understand you know, what, what have I done? And that's really the, the part. So hopefully that would, that would give most of the people the type of like it's overwhelming it's sometimes you don't understand and it's when we say repeatedly yes we know it's just to mean exactly that it's, it's trying to create a successful person of you so that it teaches you back to the you know to figure out to answer some of the questions okay so uh may then if you don't mind let me take over here and let's continue the conversation
And that's great, no problem. Okay, great. Okay, so Aiden, go on. So do you want to ask some question? Okay, so you already asked. So um, I think in whenever we say, you know, the final submissions, it's supposed to be a blog. The, the, if you attach a PDF of the blog, that means the one, you know, or the link to your blog, even if it's a PDF. So as long as there is a blog, if you submit even then the slide, it's a bonus, right? So what we want is at least one that is a report. That means the type of a blog. So as long as it's published and you submit a link, that's sufficient. As long as there is a link and you submit also the slide, great. You have done even more, you know. So if you submit a PDF of your um blog fantastic that's also uh, so it's the whole point is that we want something that that we believe that you could if you it's not already published that you could publish it right as a blog somewhere does that answer your question i don't understand why there, there is quite i think it's uh it's supposed to be not supposed to not be because there are I have I have registered you know like so I'm just gonna share you know so this is the process improvement you guys have suggested right so one of the thing is that okay we are gonna try to get randomly keeping track of a plan and progress of two or three individuals every week we definitely I think this is really a great idea uh collect the weakness and strengths of every individual over challenge uh, every monday so the tutorials we also just uh, really these are great suggestions right so now i think just like that participation and that kind of thing that we see it needs the stand-up needs to be active right to be to to it's it's a time to figure out something something that has been bothering you I think Slack is some people are really asking an important question in Slack and the discussions are going, right? That's fundamentally how everybody would help each other to try to fit all of these different elements. We know they are scattered everywhere to fit them, to create a story around them so that it fits in your head. You know, it's like, I think uh, with that Binium, he actually, or, or maybe not Binium, but today I've seen on the all community building i think there is this uh picture that um that just says how you look at it the perspective makes it it's either you know a mess or it makes it it's amon sorry like uh so amon posted really this picture this is really one of the thing everywhere i go in every group you know what i would, i'm trying to um people see is the perspective is what makes something complex, what makes something good. And you can't understand a topic with just one uh, perspective. Basically, as if like, you know, it's, you know, one data point, right? So if you have one data point, you cannot do statistics on it. And it's similar. If you have just only one perspective, you're not going to understand it. Like, even if it's an art, you don't know. If I do, even if just you look the art, if you didn't know in another perspective it was a mess, then you didn't understand it. You know? So, and my really definition of understanding is not understanding what you are told, but when you are able to actually see different things. When when you look an art, and if you can see that it is a mess, and when you see a mess and you know that it is an art, but two is not even sufficient. I want. Like usually in everything that I do, I try to ask people at least six or seven perspective of the same thing. Then you can you can assume that you understand it. And perspectives, sometimes it is very hard to come. And my experience so far is that the first perspective to come, if I ask you one question, it might take for high school, at least the ones that I've tried, for high school people would take about 11 minutes in average for someone to get one perspective of it. In a group, 
The second perspective to come will take about five minutes. And the third perspective is about two minutes. And after that, it's just seconds. So perspectives also don't grow just to every acqu acquiring different perspectives don't come also the same time. Don't, they're not equal in time. So which means people have to talk so that every other person gets their own perspective. So that means if we take two, three people sharing their perspective, then everybody will have like right within one second after that, everybody will have different perspectives that will enrich the community. And if the community is enriched, basically everybody is enriched because as I said, you know, you would get six, seven easily of perspective and you would understand it perfectly. So in these kind of conversations, if you really are bored a certain way, like, okay, I mean, I think we need to change today because we want, we have a certain burning, burning desire to understand a certain thing, or I have a question just like, you know, uh, that you have, it can, then it's really great because this is your community, not our community. We try to create this community so that everybody helps. So I'm going to stop there. And it's a reflection of like what has been so far in a, in a way, like, you know, like based on the perspectives, what are the perspectives you want to share based on the discussions that were happening in the, um, in the Slack, as well as also, where are you like in terms of like, what are the elements that are, that you, you are trying, you're grappling with, you know, it's kind of fitting in your head so, because if it fits in your head, great, we can stop now the recording and we can go all, uh, you know, to the work, but are there such things in your head that you haven't grasped? And if so, this is your opportunity. That's what stand up are for. I stop there. Um, thank you so much for your contribution. I think they are all going to reflect on that and start acting towards I'm, I'm, uh, Sorry, Mary, but I'm asking everyone. So just, okay. I want them to come back. If not, then there's no question to ask. So we could actually then stop it. Already the time is 30 minutes allocated normally, but I, I am asking actually if there is anything, because it's not, it's not, you know, it's not a formalism stand up. The formalism is to get an idea and if everyone is comfortable, then, you know, great. We can take that one as a summary. Maybe to add on your bit. So, so we are on Friday and I guess many people are working on technical challenge, which is due tomorrow. It's a great opportunity for you guys to ask even technical questions because the other bit is in the right position to answer those. And it's, it's a chance that you can take and ask really great question and can really answer them very correctly. Yeah. Great, William. Okay, thank you, Yababal, for those uh, inspiring words and uh, useful suggestions. Uh, uh, I have one question uh, regarding Moodle deployment. Uh, so right now uh, we are asked to deploy uh, save the model in a PKL, a PKL format and uh, use it in our Streamlit or Flask application to predict uh, sales or number of customers when uh, provided with a uh, uh, number of inputs, uh, different inputs. So it's my question that when, uh, when we train the data, we transform, uh, when we fit the model, we transform the data. Uh, into a form that's more suitable for training. That means scaling uh, uh, if needed normalization as well. But uh, during the model usage, the, the data will not have access to the scaling, uh, the scaling object. So uh, do we need to save the scalar as well uh, along with the model so that we can uh, take sort of the uh, inputs later on through the same scaling process before uh, injecting it into the model and uh, getting our results because if if not it will make a mess or maybe another option could be I'm not sure if it's yeah, right. I think uh, let's stop there. You have to. That's the whole ML ops is there. The whole reason why you are doing ML ops 
and why you need to have feature store, why you need to have um, ML flow, why you need to have data versioning is not just, you know, because it's cool. It's exactly what you're saying. It's first is it needs to be reproducible. And second is really, you need to do everything you have done has to be recorded. And especially this, any pre-processing that you have do, you do in a data, any model right there, any pipeline must be part of your prediction. So that means the if you look, I think in in the Google uh, ML Ops like cycle, so it's um, I think in one of like I'm just gonna actually screen share um, one of the reference. It's the key reference that is probably there. It is in the um, maybe it's in week two that was shared the reference. Um, it's a ML flow platform. Yeah, uh, no, it's not. So, so I'm just going to open it again, just simply. So this, I'm just gonna share. So do you see this? So this is MLOps continuous delivery and automation pipelines in machine learning. So this was one of the white papers that Google at some point in uh, as technical date uh, in 2015, they brought. And the reason, you know, all of these complete things that you are, you are asked to do is because at an industry level, you know, it's like doing it experiment only from going. So the first is a data scientist's experiment. And then from experiment, you convince that the managers and CEOs that this is amazing. We need to invest some amount and deploy it. And now when you go from experiment to actually testing pilot, maybe a b testing then you need to really invest and when you invest that one everything that you have done there every element has to be faithfully copied and it should also then now when you experiment you were the only one doing and you could have changed everything but now like when other people do it when other people you know it's not you in a company who's going to be deploying it it is probably you would pass it to a machine learning engineer machine learning engineer integrates it with the current system because let's say the data feed if you are facebook you know an um, ml engineer is really about live training right just data is coming live and you have to just basically every text has to be i don't know transformed whatever so a machine learning engineer needs to understand where the data is coming and integrates your model probably to the you know to the kind of the feed the data feed which is like billions or millions of uh, kind of online data that's coming every second so they need to understand you know what are the technologies that are used there is this you know are, are we using that one react thing or you know how's our data engineering working how do we ingest so that basically becomes work right so that the machine learning engineer and then the machine learning engineer when they finish they give it to the devops the devops person now takes care of in terms of like okay you know is it working um, uh, really 24 7 you know does it you know how much uh, bandwidth do, do we have like are we um, in employ deployed with some security what kind of security does it require do we have to run a new kind of instance uh, or you know can we run it together in something they figure it out right and then there are the security managers like a uh, robust whatever it's called like the infrastructure so you 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 basically are out now imagine that person who's really DevOps, the downstream consumer, they don't know anything about what you have done. And unless you really ensure that a certain, so this is basically called MLOps level zero, you know, according to Google's definition, you know, if a company, if it has only a few teams, you know, and then they all can talk to each other, 
you know, you can live with this one. So that means you have the data extraction analysis and data preparation model training and evaluation, what you call experiment setup, you will have it as one. And then a train model, you give it to other people together with every required. And then you, you will have a model registry. In this case, let's call it MLflow. Then you would basically from the model registry, the model uh, serving to prediction service, right? So this is for you, maybe this is amazing, but no, this is just level zero. That means anyone should do just that. They must start from there. And then you get into ML, ML of the level one, where you need actual, as I said, you have multiple, multiple uh, different businesses, not only just one department, the technical, it's not only just a tech department, it is actually, you know, has a different sales and others. And each probably will consume something. Maybe the sales wants to sell about this ML loaves. I mean, you know, your pipeline, they need to learn about it. They need to show something, you know, they need to uh, take screenshots. Maybe, you know, they, they need to interact in it in a different way. And that kind of way that you need really need to separate the experimental element from the production element. So that starts becoming like, okay, you know, you are now all that component that you have seen in ML loaves one, becomes one component and then the other becomes the second component, but within them sharing a certain, for example, features, stores. And then in the production, you probably need to trigger some kind of like, you know, if the model degrades, you know, you have to trigger and that kind of goes into, and then also maybe you are, last time you were working on, you know, a deep learning LSTM, maybe this time a new model has come, uh, which is completely, let's say, just at self-attention, whatever models, Oh, no, no, you have to just actually update. And that requires different features, different way of treatment. You know, you, you basically, how are you going to phase out like kind of the old ones? And how are you going to replace them with a new one? And how are you minimizing downtime between? Because people are relying on your system now, right? But that's still kind of, I would say this is the kind of ML Ops one is geared as kind of a department, a few departments, but not big, medium company. And then you have like, actually, if you are ML Ops level two, where you are actually thinking of bigger companies, enterprises, then you really separate so many things. And that's what kind of like, you know, you would get uh, all of the, every control, you know, and the meta stores are for everything is different for, you know, and everything is added with automation. So that means the human interventions are very much reduced, blah, blah, right? So. It's basically, I'm, I'm answering, I'm probably going beyond what you ask, but it is essential to store every single thing because you don't know who's gonna be running your model. And therefore, and also you know for sure as a scientist, as a machine learning engineer, that you know for sure if the inputs aren't transformed, if the, that means if the transformation model, the pre-processing model is not part of your model at prediction, then you're wrong. That means whatever you show them to your company is will not work. So I hope I answered your question in a very long way, but most likely useful way. Yeah, it's uh, quite useful. Thank you. But uh, what's the best way to save, uh, uh, like uh, for example, the scalar? I mean, Data it's, scale. exactly, it's exactly what is the scalar? Like you have to know, like how does it's just it can be pickle, right? It's like if it is just a class instance, you can pick it. Okay, that's uh, quite helpful. Thank you, everyone, for the exchange. Yeah. Thank you. Somewhere. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Hello, Abdul and good morning to everyone. <coughs> morning. Uh, my question is. Uh, is like kind of I had a blocker yesterday, and uh, when I was training my deep learning module, it's key, it keeps crashing even in collab. And before that, I tried to do the AD Fuller test uh, to see the p value, and it keeps crashing on that too. So, should I use lesser da data points or should uh, there's a workaround around the module? Again, I mean, my, my only thing is. That you know, you have to investigate it, right? What, what makes it crash? Is it size? You know, is it like, does it work in your local uh, computer? Um, if it's it works size. in it, yeah? It's, it's the RAM uh, keeps... Uh... Yeah, so, and then, you know, of course, there are multiple ways to go around it. One is definitely what makes the model that big, 
you know, what are the irrelevant elements? Because in a prediction, you might not need so many of the data that the metadata that was kept in the model. For example, you know, do you actually need if the model, if let's say logistic regression, in the logistic regression, you really don't don't need all of the the data that was provided for training. You can drop it, right? So you can only just keep just the the coefficients that you finally get, and then from those coefficients you can reconstruct a model. You know that basically means like you don't need all that to load because whenever you are actually pickling a class, what you're doing is that even the class data that was used in as you know that you you were, you were able to extract from that class is saved you don't need that so that means all you need for a training is i think as i was saying the scalar and the different preprocessors that you would apply plus the coefficients whichever you know if, whether it's lstm whether it's you know uh, uh, random forest all you need is just basically a random forest is basically just the tree you know what trees you know what are the trees how many trees and what are the ages and their their kind of values right so the data in that sense you don't need it so you can drop the data and you, you can it's called you can um, prune your model so you can search on pruning models just for saving and serving i don't think you need to do much because it's only at training that you need all that data. And I, I don't see that as, as an inherent problem other than you probably didn't prune your model or you didn't clean it. Okay. Does that, does that do you have now a way to go to, to look at it? So for example, one way is just prune or another way is just basically just save the coefficients only and then load the coefficients. So learn how to from psychic just how to only save the coefficients of a model and to load those coefficients of the model. Um, and, and probably by coefficients, it, it requires also what kind of how many parameters, whatever it is. But if it's a, you know, what is the input structure, whatever, but that one, you don't need the data. You only just need, um, you know, a column structure you can give it. Or basically even, you know, a, one single row would be sufficient to, to check what are the features, right? Um, only the whole number of rows are usually relate, required for training. So do you have a, a, like a, a you know, point of attack now to your problem? Yes, I will try a uh, little less features when I train them. No, no, I, I didn't say that actually. That's exactly a different thing. <laughs> I didn't say about little feature, little that. I'm just saying the model, you, when you save the data, what makes the model heavy? What makes the model, is that really just the model itself that, you know, like if, if you are, I mean, I'm not sure what you are uh, training, is that LSTM? Yes, LSTM. Okay. Can you check how many parameters do you have in LSTM? As a whole, uh, 1,300. It's nothing, right? It's <laughs> just basically, it's not even kilobytes. Yes. So why, why are you struggling? So that's what I'm asking. Exactly. Don't, it's not about, don't go, just, just go and do it. Like, okay, why is my model in a psyche? How can I prune my model? And let's think, just specifically, uh, think that. So it's not about, don't go into the, oh no, I have to now reduce the thing. That's, that's not the solution. It's, you're not ask, answering any, anything by doing that. By understanding it, just because this is simple, maybe ask it. I can help you there as well in Slack. But it's really nothing like you use of the common sense. The common sense that how many parameters I have? One thousand, even one million, and one million is one. How much is probably depending on the size. You know, it can't be that much. So why why is it then taking that much? Eh? Probably that my the data that I use to train is probably inside the still inside the. Uh, model maybe but understand what is it that is that is taking space so maybe that i'm wrong it's not 1000 maybe just for everything that there are many other metadata that you need to save but you need to understand what makes a model big to solve it you can't just go hope blindly that okay if i reduce now my feature until a point where it's not even useful and relevant 
um, that it will it will work. So I would say post it, but let me give you this as a challenge. Find out and and tell us why your model was, you know, that big. Okay. And update us in Slack. No. Great. Okay. So I see that uh, there is Margaret. Uh, Margaret, you can also if you are, and then Yididia also have a question. I will read and then I will go after that. So you can go on, Margaret. Um, sorry, I think I raised my hand um, from there that time. Sorry. Okay, no worries. Okay, so Yididia, mostly actually what you are saying, in my opinion, is not about for the deep learning. It's actually for uh, profit. Profit, it's called fitting. So when you are fitting a variable, so that basically it's a term fitting, you know, you have learned uh, in high school that you have a point and you wanted to fit a curve for it. And that curve could be, you know, um, a quadratic function. It can be a certain linear function that's called regression. But if there is, if there is uh, a model, so linear regression becomes like if you have ax plus dy blah blah, that becomes linear regression because you assume it's a model, and a model comes from a distribution because you are assuming when you are usually doing linear, what you are saying is data minus my model is distributed as a Gaussian. That's what you are really saying, like uh, simply. And profit does a different thing that basically fits, it doesn't care what your data is. It only cares like there's a, uh, you know, something called time, like that just continues every time you get something and then it goes up and down some value. In that case, it doesn't really use any other feature. It only uses the, so, and it doesn't even model anything. It just only tries to find, you know, to, to learn what kind of, you know, it, it of course generalizes everything. So as, as I said, it adds, some function again it's modeling but the model does not inspired by anything like linear regression whatever it's like it, it models different things okay maybe there are it assumes four types of or three types of uh some kind of periodicity you know in a linear seasonal whatever and then i'm going to then introduce some kind of change point this and that and that and then it would try to find parameters for them so in that case it really doesn't care about any other parameter other than just the time while anything that is better than that it's that is not a uh, thing it actually takes into account correlations between them so one way even to put in the fitting correlation is let's imagine you split just like you did in in week two you're splitting it let's say based on some other feature let's say you are now looking the time series when uh, in your case when for example the computer's number around it is greater than something so now you are introducing in that fitting some kind of dependence and then you're giving it it's basically you are creating some kind of you know tree model or random forest model at each random forest you are actually then fitting right so that means you will have profit for multiple trees in that way even if profit in its own is really looking at only time but you introduce some kind of filter which makes much more the model more complex and dependent on your models or, or on your features but deep learning in most of the time it actually is the same time series what they use is that they look also some kind of you know attention they they do exactly this kind of um you know swapping things um like that so sure most of the time series analysis would depend sometimes on on that time but depending on the deep learning model you can introduce some form of attention, some form of input structure uh, that, and it's only mostly it's the fitting ones that really just solely depend only on time and the, the target variable. Does that, does that address like your question? If not, just please unmute and, and speak. So, uh, Yididia, like, does that address your question? Okay. So, I don't know your second question, whether it's targeted to any, I mean, I, I lost the context. So, um, 
So is it efficient and would it, it wouldn't the linear PG affect the model accuracy? Again, was that for the time series that I'm talking about? In that case, definitely, of course, I'm not suggesting linearity. Uh, I'm saying like linear regressions definitely, of course, have limitation. But then profit, whatever, doesn't even care about linearity. It, it models it in a completely different nonlinear way. It introduces multiple, multiple types of model, some of them periodic models, some of them, you know, it's kind of the nonlinear, uh, nonlinearity in it in, as one part of the model. Uh, change points as one point because, you know, like what if like, okay, suddenly fuel has increased just like now because a wire has erupted somewhere and, you know, the price has gone, all of the price has gone up or all of the buying people don't have any more money. And, you know, like if you think of Syria or whatever, like, okay, now people no more buy in from that supermarket because there was a ban on it, you know, something like that. And that's called a step like kind of change point, you know, that something has changed dramatically, you know, so that basically you need to incorporate that kind of change point because you don't always assume that things just gradually change. And so for non-gradual change, profit, for example, assumes that non-linear like change points and then the linearities, it's kind of models them as a, in some Fourier space, stuff like that. So definitely, you know, all of the model, you know, we don't use linear model, but linear models can be very complex as well by modeling for every feature. All right. You, you might say like, okay, in time, this one evolves this way, this one evolves that way, blah, blah. And then each of them, of course, evolve linearly, but ultimately they can be very complex. So it doesn't, you know, linear models, uh, generalized linear models are actually really one of the most powerful uh, methodologies out there in, in most companies, people use them because they are simple to interpret and also powerful. It's basically just saying, you know, I don't expect some kind of complex things, but of course, deep learning with all its number of features or, you know, random forest and next boost with all types of, you know, feature, number of parameters they can use, they can model many more complex uh, relationships. So hopefully that addresses. So I think our time is getting up, but is there any question? Just one last question, Margaret. Um, I have a question regarding the interim submissions for reports. Yeah. So I had a, I had a problem trying to, um, di display my data, um, in a way that I can compare, uh, two data sets. That is the train and the tests. And inside the test and the train, I need to compare the different promos that were there. So there was first promo, promo two, and the other promos. So is there a way I can easily display the difference between both promos in both tests, in both the train and the test? So like compare, um, yeah. So yeah. for, for quick things, usually, you know, you can just plot things side by side, right? You can have, you know, subplots and you can have two axes. And if you can't put them together, is, is that the kind of question? But it, because you can't overplot them together, is that the question? Or I, am I in the wrong track? Um, the question is, there are so many... Um columns we are comparing in tests and in both train. So I need to compare, um, I need to compare tests. Yeah. So but uh, usually what, what is the point of this? You are comparing promos, its effect on, on, let's say like sales, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, or maybe not, you may be just like, how many promos are there? Like how often are they? Um, and you could be comparing just directly, just the number of promos and um, the spacing between them, between test and train, because maybe in the test, you don't have sales for them. So I think there are, you know, it's turning the table and saying like, what do I mean by compare? Just like week two, maybe compare means like, do they have equal missing values? Do they have, you know, same number, like maybe weighted because like, of course, the number of data points in test is smaller than the number of uh, trade. 
So of course you have to normalize it with respect to the total number. Uh, are they equal? The ratio is proportional. So you could just compare it by number like that. It could be uh, by time distribution. Are they equally distributed? Does that make sense? Um, yes, yes it does. So it's really most of the time it's really rotating things just to to not look at them directly because sometimes the direct one it just doesn't make sense. Like, uh, it makes things complex. So, and then I, I would just also comment on things that I notice. Some people are very clever in a way when they submit, they basically submit what we ask it for. And usually that really helps because, you know, it's not only for us, but it's really when you listen, what you are asked, usually you get, you know, people get happy. And in a company, almost always you depend on people being kind of getting what they want, right? Like a, your boss would be required to, to report to a boss and they might ask you something and you have to deliver that something, right? So, and sometimes we, I see people, they've done all the effort and then, but they didn't submit. I mean, I've seen in the group, they have contributed in the group, but they haven't submitted like the, the link. And I really just can't understand that kind of thing, you know, because it's like, oh, everything is done. It's just at the last moment you fail, mostly sometimes because you didn't ask how your other members of the team, they submit, right? So I think these are like, these are, the, you really can remove them. Like, you know, you shouldn't be feeling down because you didn't do just the simplest thing. You have done all the hard work and you didn't do the simplest thing. Please read always what is needed. And then also when you submit, don't just submit, be, you know, I, we can see from your code, you have done something, but then you submit something that is not at all words for your, what your effort, because you somehow failed at that point. Maybe just you're tired of it. You really have to plan it. Like, you know, my other way to, to help you in this kind of strategy is that separate it. Like the work, like if you're tired of something, take a break and then allocate time real time for submission and then so that because submission is important you know that's how you communicate submission means you know like to your boss sending email if you really send email in the same mood that you were kind of doing sometimes you really fail to recognize it so i would say really ensure if you have been doing good like you know submitting nice great but there are people that i have noticed i can tell you week two has been an incredible journey because a lot of people who were at week one, I felt like, okay, I'm not sure, like, you know, it's really there struggling. They shined. It's an incredible, you know, um, I think it's, it's, it feels everyone can make it. Like, I think it's the first week that, be, that made me really believe that there is, everybody has the required kind of skill and the required, you know, they feel in different gaps. If they don't have like the coding part, they have something else. And this is an incredible to, to see from my side. So I can tell you, it's really, everyone is really, you know, in a good place. And, but I have seen failures, small failures, just because people don't pay attention to what is asked or like to, at the final point, they just don't deliver what is, you know, it's kind of what they have done. So ensure not only to do the work, but also to talk about it. That means to really deliver it in a way. And you probably have received some of you like some feedbacks. It has been great. And it was really, you know, it took a long time to grade for me in particular, because it was just so much wells of work that was done. Um, and even if you, you know, you, you, you're not like super comfortable in Git, I think I have seen a lot of people try and contributing in that and keep that. And because we look at your, your kind of effort like there, you know, how you, you managed, how you didn't manage, how you succeeded. It's like the, the fingerprint, basically what the trace that you leave uh, of your effort. So the more you show it there, the more we see not only us, everybody, the people who employ also. So keep up the good work has been an amazing, you know, week two has been amazing. And we are uh, looking into week three now, grading and we will learn more and we'll give feedback. But I think I, I want to encourage people just that, it, it was fantastic. It, and then some, some of you who probably didn't take, give time for the submission, ensure that next time you really prepare for submission. 
because the mission is as important as the work itself because if you can't tell it you know it's sometimes as if you haven't done it right we can't see it so uh, read what is required to submit and really submit all those that and you can really help us by also screenshot because we have always this screenshot everything you think that we might miss it just screenshot and give it like uh, attach it because the screenshot will help us really pinpoint where where your things are like even if we're, we don't particularly as screenshot like this you if you assume that it you know we we need to see that you know for example your comet histories at some point if they're buried so deep you know maybe we need to see it right so that means you can help us by by attaching that so and tell your colleagues i think today is the lowest attendance that i have seen and i don't know why but tell also your friends please and really put effort in submission and we there will always be screenshots uh, section where we you know we ask you to help us in terms of identify where things are by just help you know providing screenshot i think taking screenshot doesn't take you that much time and it's your work and who's going to speak about it if you don't speak about it so please and with that i think i will hand over again back to miriam so that she can close it but thank you bye Thank you so much for your contribution once again. Um, that being said, I don't have any other thing to add. I think it will just further reinforce what Yabibal have said. We should be ready to ask questions and like, see things from our perspective too. Everest, is there any other thing you want to add, please? Thank you, Miriam. Uh, nothing from my end. Okay. Thank you guys for coming again. Um, enjoy the rest of your day.